Ashley here of Stax in the City, and I want to say a wonderful and resounding hello and welcome, and I'm so happy that you guys have decided to take time out of your busy lives to welcome me over here in your own little corner, my corner of YouTube. So I want to say hello and welcome, you all. Oh, and of course subscribe. Please subscribe so that we can continue to talk about ways to get this money, empower this money, all that fun stuff. Yes. Okay. So today, you all, I really want to focus in on your mentality. Does your mentality need a makeover? Does it need a little remodel? Now, I love, I love HGTV, like Mooch. I love House Hunters, my, one of my favorite shows of all time. And I love all those fun remodeling shows. My mom and I watch those little remodeling shows, and it's like, wow, because we just love a good before and after. You see the shoddy home, you see a hot mess. Ah, people are screaming, they're all depressed. Oh my God, oh my God, it's so much money. And then you see the edited version it takes to get there. And then you have this beautiful after that people are so pressed about and everyone wants to be on their date. But they don't see really the intensive work it takes to get there. I'm saying all this to say, y'all, some of y'all are just, y'all mentalities are a whole bunch of befores. There are a lot of befores. And we need to work on it until you become a really great monumental after. I'm like, wow, like, wow, you think so positively about the way you get your money or wow, your mentality is so focused on money management and life, blah, blah, blah. And you may need a money remodel. You may need a mental remodel. Maybe focus on getting that, you all. I really do believe that money management is not about dollar cents, bank accounts, Excel spreadsheets, checks, some of us, you know, we're throwbacks. What is it, traveler's checks? Yes, some, you know, credit card. It's not about that. Because the thing is, we can go anywhere to find that information. What it's really about at the end of the day, you all, is your mentality. What do you mentally think about the money that you have? Do you think about it at all? What are your attitudes about money? And it's important to consider that before you start your journey on really getting this money right. Because at the end of the day, y'all, it's really just a mentality. It's a mentality first, and everything just kind of falls in line. Once your mentality about your money is right, we're good. So some of y'all over here talking about being broken, this and that, and the third, but maybe your money mentality ain't proper. It ain't correct. And I'm over here to tell y'all the three ways that maybe your money mentality may need to get remodeled, may need to do some editing. Okay, number one, this is probably my biggest one, is your verbiage. You, I... <sighs> when it comes to your talk about money what comes to mind what are the first things in your head that pop up i'm broke i don't have any money i'm waiting for this check to come oh i can't wait for the 15th to come oh i never have enough money you can never have enough money it doesn't matter money's not important okay and so forth honestly you that's the big thing verbiage what when when you're talking about money when you're thinking about money what comes to mind and if it's those words, broke, poor, ain't got it, ain't enough of it, they, they got to go. You got to throw them in the trash. You need to put some new paint on that or something. Honestly, you need to demolish that. We're doing a gut reno, y'all. Take it out. Because those, when you think that way, it's going to reinforce how you feel, y'all. Money is everywhere. It's everywhere. When I grew up, I, was, I spent some time in the country part of Virginia, and then I grew up in rural North Carolina, and we didn't have a lot of money, but I never felt, I never said we were poor. You never said that. There were times we slept on the floor. There were times where we didn't really have much food to eat. There were times where we were shivering because we didn't have our, we didn't have any heat. The heat wouldn't work. No, the heat never worked. Or the air conditioning was just, just we didn't have no air conditioning. It was too expensive to put in our little double white trailer. But I never thought of myself as poor. You're not poor. There's people here who earn six-figure salaries and they still don't know where their money is going. They still feel like they're broke. And the thing is, it's not that, it's not the fact that you're broke, it's that your mentality isn't configured to a place where you can create more wealth for yourself. So do some things to change the way that you approach your money. So maybe you ain't got no coin, fine, but we're not gonna say that. Instead, you're saying, you know, I'm, with, you know, I'm looking forward to more abundance. I have abundance now. I have so much money. Even if you don't feel it, y'all. I have so much money now. I can't wait for my check. How blessed am I to know that I have money coming? You have to reconfigure the, your brain so that it kind of works. One thing that I love, one thing I love to do, you all, I live in D.C. I walk a lot. I don't have a car. I find money everywhere. There may be pennies. I just find quarters sometimes. I pick it up. Yes, I do. Because for me, it's a reminder 
from God or from whatever you believe in that there there is abundance everywhere but you need to take the time to appreciate the abundance that you have now so you all change your mentality please stop saying that you're broke even if you really ain't got no coin because if you broke now you'll be broke forever some it, it really is it's here y'all it's here please change the verbiage I can't emphasize that enough if you ain't got a coin just stop saying it just be like you know I can't wait till it comes or you know my ship is coming or let me see what I can do to get my money right. Like I, my money is correct. I, y'all, I'm telling you, this stuff sounds petty, but it's rizzy. It's R to the, it's real, y'all. It's real. Okay. So number two, that you may need a money remodel. Adopting some of your parents or your caregivers' attitudes about money into your own life. And this is a really big one because I have felt privy to this too. A lot of us, myself included, are living a life that our parents don't live. They don't. They didn't have the same access that we did growing up, perhaps. Or maybe the money that I have coming in is way more. Like I earn so much more money than my mom does, which isn't saying much. No offense. Hi, mom. Sorry, I love you. But we're not. You know, it's not as much. I'm earning more money than my parents do. Way more money than my parents. And because of that, I can't use the same verbiage that they had growing up because it was just different. They used the money they had differently to raise us. I don't have to do those things. Even though, you know, I don't have kids and all this, but I don't have to think those ways. My mom would always, you know, my dad would always be like, well, wish we had it. I ain't got it. Oh, it's too bad. You know, you ain't never gonna have it. That was the mentality that I was raised with. My dad, my parents are also very cheap. Very, very, very cheap. I adopted some of those. I used to be afraid, truly afraid to spend money. I was fearful. So I was afraid I was gonna have it. And I adopted some of that mentality from my parents, which is not a way, it's not a healthy relationship you have to have with your money. I don't recommend doing that. So you have to think about that, particularly if you do have a, if you have more money than your parents do, you're earning more, are the things that they taught you really conducive to the money that you have today? Is it conducive to how you're spending your money today? Because for me, if you still have anxiety, if you still feel stressed out, if you still feel negative, ill will toward the money you have, you haven't really, and your parents felt that way too, you have not changed much, regardless, regardless of how much money you have now. You're still in the same mentality. You're still in the same class, the same thought process as your parents when they were struggling to make the ends meet. You're struggling to make ends meet too, but it's just on a grander scale. So don't, don't do that. And it takes time. It took me a long time to adapt out of that. The biggest thing I recommend with this piece, you all, is to write it down. I'm a huge, I'm an avid, I love to read and I like to write. I don't love to write, but I like to write. And I do write down the way I feel about my money. My attitude about money has changed from 10 years ago than it has now. And it's not necessarily because I earn more, it's because I'm more aware of why I spend the money I spend. And I understand exactly where it came from. So be very clear about that, you all. Very clear, write it down, be transparent, be honest with yourself, you all. Because the only way to make change happen is when you're honest with yourself and where your money comes from, the mentality behind the money you have. Now my last one, the last symbol that you may need a money mentality makeover, a remodel, a gut job, is if you cave into peer pressure. Now this is a really big one too. I live in a city where it's not about what you know, who you know, everybody wants to work for the government, everybody is looking snazzy in their suits, everybody is fancy, everybody wants to go out, R&B brunches, rooftop parties, this, that, and the third, and they want you to attend. And these things ain't cheap, y'all. DC is not cheap. They're over here charging $25 for a little janky vodka soda. Okay, maybe like 12, like 15, for a little jank vodka soda. You go out to park on 14th and they're selling this massive image of wealth and excess that you may or may not have, but you feel the need to succumb to it. I've had friends who were earning thousands of dollars as summer associates for law school and they don't have anything to show for it because they spend so much time trying to impress their peers and the people around them and live it up. But my thing is if you always cave in and say yes, to whatever surroundings are and you're not feeling good about it, then you gotta learn how to say no. Say no. You got better things to do, you got more important things to do. Say no to plea pressure. Say no to peer pressure. Say no. Like I said, it can be hard at first because you always feel like you're missing out on something. I felt that way before too. But I also know that what I want in my life is bigger and greater 
there with his R&B brunches. Y'all, I've been there. I've done it. And I wasn't that impressed with it. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, yay. Oh, my God, they're playing nobody. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at you buckets on. And it's the same thing over and over and over again. And like I said, I've definitely, I've been pressured. I've felt that way before. I've fallen off, but it's also very important to acknowledge the fact that you have succumbed to peer pressure and understand why you're going to these places. Is it really because you want to have a good time or you're trying to escape? Or is it because someone told you to do it? You're not really feeling super happy there. It's just the image, this and that. You have to be very honest with yourself and with your forecoming. 